So welcome to the explanation video and in this video we are going to take the Twitter app that we made and we are going to explain everything in great detail so that you understand uh, more than you did before. If you understand everything, awesome, you don't need to watch this video. But uh, if you did not understand everything, then continue watching because we will go through all of this stuff. So first of all, we start by laying out our storyboard. First of all, we have our search field where our user is going to input the user that he wants to search for or the Twitter handle for a user that he wants to search for. And it's important that it's the Twitter handle and not the username. Then we have a search button that's going to run all of the action. Then we have an image view that's going to display the profile picture. We have a label that's going to display the Twitter handle. And then down here we have simply inserted a table view. We have created a prototype cell, which simply means that all of our other cells are going to look exactly like our prototype cell. And in order for us to be able to refer to that prototype cell, we have given it an identifier. So if we select the cell, uh, just like this, you can see that we have given it an identifier named cell so that we can refer back to that type of cell when we create all of our other cells. And then we also dragged in a text view into that prototype cell so that we can customize it in a greater way. So normally a cell is just one label with one line. Here we have the opportunity to customize the text more and also display much more text uh, in a better way. So that's why we created a custom table view cell. And then in order for us to be able to change or interact with that particular custom build built table view cell, we created a Swift file that went along with that table view cell that we named my table view cell. And then we imported the text view into that file. That is so that we can access that particular object, object in our other code so that we can input some text into that text field at a later time. So that's basically all there is to it. We created a table view, a custom cell. And as I said in the video, uh, if you don't understand everything with this, I want to refer you to two videos. First of all, how to create a table view. So watch that if there's any questions about the table view. And then also the video how to create a custom table view cell, which explains how to create the custom table view cell in greater detail. So don't move further along in this explanation tutorial if those two things aren't in place. So if there's questions still around those two subjects, then please go watch those two videos before we continue along here. Okay, so the next thing we did was of course import all of our um, storyboard objects. And then we created a array that uh, is going to store all of our tweets. Then down here, we create set up our table view with two functions. The first one, number of rows and sections, which returns the number of um, of rows that we want in our table view. And of course, the number of rows that we want to or want to have is going to be equal to the length of this array. So each tweet is going to have their row and therefore the number of rows is going to be equal to the count of our array. Then here we create our, we give, uh, we give each of our table view a name or text that it's going to display. So we create a table view and the design of the table view by referring to our identifier, our prototype cell with the identifier cell. And then we convert it to a my table view cell, which as you remember is our uh, custom file right here that goes along with our um, custom table view cell. Then we gave, we access that cell and then we access the text view within that cell. So this text view right here. And then, then we say the text of that text view is going to be equal to that particular tweet. And then we're going to return that cell, give that cell to our function. Again, refer back to my, how to create a, a table view in Swift video. Here, when our user clicks on search, we're first of all checking if the user has actually inputted something. If he has, we move along with this function right here, this function right here, because here we just replace the occurrences 
of spaces with uh, removing the spaces and then we run this function. We first of all check if we have an error. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. We check if we have an error. If we do have that, we create an error message. So we pass this error to a variable named error message and we display that in our label. If we don't get have a localized description, which means we don't have more information about the error, we simply display a generic error message. Then, if we don't have an error, which means we have, have had some kind of success, we're going to take all of the web content that we do have, so the HTML code of, the, of, um, of that particular Twitter profile, and we're going to convert it to a string. Then we're going to check if it contains the title tag and this tag right here. If it does, then we're going to get the name by first of all taking all of the HTML code and then separating by each occurrence of title, which is all the stuff before the username, which we found out by looking at the source. And then we again separate that string by the occurrence of this little pipe right here, which we again found out that that leaves us with just the name, which we store in this variable right here. The same, we did the exact same thing with this, only this time we mined for the URL. We did the exact same thing right here. And then we went through all of the objects in that array and again separated by this one so that we were left with just the tweets. Then we updated our array that is going to contain all of our tweets and that our table view refers to, which is this one right here, with all of the elements in our array. Then we updated our interface, so we updated our label, our image view, our table view, and we also stopped the activity indicator, which we created in a function up here, so we first of all began ignoring the interaction events with the application <clears throat> and then we created the activity indicator right here before we started animating it and added it to the view so uh, the screen basically and then here we stopped it from animating because we have everything that we need the whole process is done and down here we simply have a function that displays the profile picture and it does that by getting a URL and then opening that URL in the session, getting that data and then displaying that data in a simple image view. So that is all there is to it. Hopefully you enjoyed this little explanation video. I at least enjoyed making it. Now, if you enjoy the rest of the tutorial and this one, then simply click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for future videos. And uh, once again, thank you for watching.